What's up everybody, my name's Chance, and today we're going to be playing a Death Touch deck, or a Can't Touch This deck. Um, cue the music, right? And Danto is not going to be big enough to deal with it. So, yeah. Ooh, we just got a Varaska. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to swing in with the Poison Tip, and no matter what they do here, it's a lose-lose. It's Say they make the dragon, then we Assassin's Trophy the dragon. Say they just block, then, uh, well, we've taken out their creature. No, so, uh, in all seriousness, uh, this is a deck that both uh, my supporters and I've seen MTG Jeff's supporters also ask for a uh, Death Touch deck. And so I figured, yeah, let's uh, let's give it a shot. And it's actually worked wonders. Um, thus far, I haven't lost a single game with it, and I've played five games, so... Yes, some of them were flukes, and by flukes I mean like, uh, you know, get halfway through the game and the opponent get mad just because you you killed one or two of their creatures, right? And they just back out. I don't really count those as victories as your opponent, like, they could have pulled back out. It's just they tilted and, uh, you know, left early. So, I always uh, like to count those games just as flukes, as they don't show the true potential of the deck. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll we'll go ahead and hop into the deck tech or the deck breakdown, and this is definitely going to be an interesting one, and I feel like a lot spicier than what people are giving it credit for. So, kicking this off, we have two copies of Duress, which is fantastic for looking into our opponent's hand, taking out whatever we may want to, and especially since it can come down on a turn one, it can get rid of our opponent's thought erasures or uh, cast downs, you know, those turn two plays that you're like, oh, come on such a cheap spell and it's so easy to get out how could I have not how could I have not duressed it away um, moving us down we have three copies of hired poisoner now this is just a one mana one one death touch um, so it fits really really well into our uh, our guild and what we're trying to do here and that's pretty much just play evasive creatures and get our damage in where we can moving us down we have two copies of Kaya's ghost form and this is a spell that I can't stress enough you don't want to overplay it um, Alrighty, as I was saying, Kai's Ghost Form, you're either going to be targeting your Leyline Prowler or your uh, Braska Swarm Eminence, or you can even target your Vivian Champion of the Wilds, although uh, she's not as fantastic as Vraska, even though she does allow you to cast your creature spells as though they had Flash, um, giving you Death Touch uh, creatures at instant speed, which is really, really nice, especially in those moments where you want to be blocking um, and want to mitigate some damage at instant speed. So moving us down, we have three copies of Adventurous Impulse, which is excellent for either A, finding the lands we may need to get out, you know, a Vraska or a God Eternal or a Vivian, um, as well as helping us find a creature. And as most of our deck is either um, Planeswalker or creatures, we do have, what, 15, 17 cards that aren't uh, Planeswalker or creatures. But aside from that, um, the rest of our deck is going to get hit with Adventurous Impulse, so what, 17 minus 60, 43 cards that you can that you can hit with these three, so pretty good odds, and more than likely you'll either find a land or a creature every time, so moving us down, we have two copies of Aid the Fallen, again, this is a card that you don't want to overplay, but when played in small amounts and when played correctly, it is fantastic, so again, you can get back your Leyline, or Leyline, uh Prowler, or a Poison Tip Archer, and then also get back a Vraska, or also get back a Vivian, or a Vivian Reed, you know, however you may uh, choose to select that. However, Aid the Fallen is two mana, and uh, if you don't have a Planeswalker in the graveyard, then it's two mana to return one creature to your hand, which is uh, not that good, right? Because we have Fond Finality, which is a dual card, um, and we can pay two mana and return two creatures to our hand, or, you know, on the other side of it, we can pay six mana as a, as a board wipe of sorts, so... Aid the Fallen, again, it's good, just don't don't overdo it. So, Moving us down, we have three copies of Orzhov Enforcer, a 1-2 Death Touch with Afterlife of 1. Um, came out in the Ravnica Allegiance set, honestly just an excellent card. The Afterlife makes it really useful even after you trade. You still have that 1-1 one, one Flyer, which can definitely help you get in some damage against decks that don't really have much flying defenses. So, moving us down, we have two copies of Assassin's Trophy. Now, if you're going to be playing Golgari, I honestly think uh, you should be running Assassin's Trophy in every single deck, right? If you're every single Golgari, 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 whatever. <laughs> every single green-black deck, you should have this card in. It, it targets enchantments, it targets artifacts, it targets creatures, it targets planeswalkers. So, 
you know, what are you doing not playing it? It's two mana, and yes, the the land could severely help your opponent. Say you run into mono red, obviously you don't want to be giving them extra lands. However, I think taking out a Steamkin could definitely be worth that extra land. So, you know, you got to weigh, weigh your options. And playing two copies, generally you're not going to ramp them that hard. You know, if you play both copies back to back, turn two, turn three, yeah, you probably just gave them a pretty massive lead. Um, so be be aware of that. But this card is definitely excellent, um, and I think people should be playing it and giving it more credit than what they currently are in the meta. So moving us down again, I've already talked about this card. We have two copies of Fine Finality, excellent card, fantastic, uh, especially in this deck where we kind of want to be trading our creatures away because they have Death Touch. So Oftentimes we're going to be getting a a mana advantage as they're going to be trading away creatures that they paid more than one or two mana for. Meanwhile, we have you know Orzhov Enforcers and Hired Poisoners that uh, are very cheap and very very great at removing our opponent's threats. So moving us down, we have two copies of Swarm Guild Mage. Now some people may uh, question his place in this deck or its place in this deck. However, I find it to be really really awesome and really key in the moments where you need him. Um, so if we can tap him and pay 5 mana and creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 and gain menace until end of turn. Now the plus 1 plus 0, I mean for 5 mana it's uh, it's a bit steep, but giving all of your creatures menace is fantastic when you're playing death touch. Um, so it, it basically just means they have to block with 2 creatures to any of your 1 creatures, so as long as it's not Hired Poisoner or Zov Enforcer, or it could be those if you've managed to get down to Vraska Swarm Eminence and build up um, build up counters on those creatures. However, it does make it a little bit more difficult for the opponent to block, as you'll be able to choose you know which creature you want to kill, even with these uh, little one one powered creatures. So it is still nice, just not as nice as it is on the Laylene Prowler or the Poison Tip Archer, right? Um, so yeah, Swarm Guild Mage, pretty good there. And then you can also just pay two mana and tap him and gain two life, which can help you uh, help you sustain against aggro matchups. So definitely definitely worthwhile there. Then we have three copies of Vivian Champion of the Wilds. This uh, this Planeswalker allows you to flash in your creatures, which we've already talked about. And then the plus one effect: um, one target creature gains Vigilance and Reach until your next turn, which is pretty good if you're dealing with flyers. Um, or if you just need to get in there with some attacks and keep your creature back at the same time. Uh, the minus two effect, we can look at the top three cards. Exile one face down. It has to be a creature in order for us to cast it. Otherwise, we just exiled one of our own cards. Um, but again, we're playing a lot of creatures, so this does help us. In those times when we really, really need a Death Toucher, right? You minus two. Maybe you flash in the Death Toucher on their turn and take out some... Uh, I don't know. I would say Galta, but Galta has Trample, so <laughs> probably won't help you out too much there. It does still kill Galta, but, uh, you know, damage is still going to go through. Moving us down, we have two copies of Leyline or Leyline Prowler. Um, so a quick little note about this. If you have any more than two copies, by all means, throw it in here. It's probably the best Death Touch creature in this deck. Um, three mana for two, three. Eh, it's okay. But then it has Death Touch and Life Link and the ability to tap to add one mana of any color. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> if you have more than two copies, if you have three or four or however many, um, I would definitely be playing them. And we may actually go up one more copy and go down a copy of Vivian, to be completely honest. Um, <clears throat> I feel like that may work out a little bit better. Now that we've lost the match, I just feel like the Leyline Prowler thus far has been very key in winning them. So want to make sure we hit those. Um, moving us down, we have two copies of Vraska's Contempt, which is just some some excellent removal on creatures or Planeswalker. We also gain two life, so it can help us uh, balance out against aggro decks. Then we have three copies of Poison Tip Archer, which has Reach and Death Touch, 2-3 for 4 mana. Slightly, and by slightly, I mean definitely, <laughs> worse stats than Laylene Prowler, as you're only paying 3 mana for the Prowler. However, this card does have Reach, which makes it... Uh, Fantastic at taking out Hydroid Crisis or uh, can't take out a Lyra. Just so you know, First Strike does beat Death Touch unless you give your Death Touch First Strike. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, uh, still fantastic at defending. And then furthermore, it reads whenever a creature dies, any creature, your creature, their creature, doesn't matter. Um, 
each opponent loses one life, so fantastic, and especially since you want to be sacrificing your uh, your creatures, right? Unless you have a Vraska down and you can build them up, then sacrificing them is pretty much the route to go. Moving us down, we have three copies of Vraska Swarm's Eminence, which is pretty much the card that made everybody say, hey, <laughs> let's try Death Touch. Um, the static ability that this Planeswalker comes with is whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals damage to a player or Planeswalker, which is an uh, interesting thing to note, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature. So all of our creatures have Death Touch, meaning all of our creatures, whenever they deal damage to the player or Planeswalker, will get a plus one plus one counter. So our Laidly Prowler goes from 2-3 to a 3-4, and then a 4-5, and then a 5-6, which is honestly just ridiculous. Same thing with our Poison Tip, um, Orzhov Enforcer gets bigger, you know, higher Poisoner. It's all just madness, which is just fantastic. And then furthermore, we can minus two on her, create a 1-1 black assassin creature token with death touch, and whenever this creature deals damage to a planeswalker, destroy that planeswalker. So it has planeswalker death touch on top of it. Um, and then of course, the 1-1 black assassin creature has death touch, so whenever it deals damage to said planeswalker or to our opponent, um, it's also gonna grow along with all of our other creatures. Moving us down, we have one copy of God Eternal Ronos, as this and Vivian are sort of our other uh, alternate win cons, as you can't always hit Vraska Swarm Eminence. So I figured we needed to branch out a little bit, right? Have have an in-game answer that's not just Vraska. So these are the two cards that I came up with. God Eternal Ronos, one, it is a creature that has Death Touch. It's a 5-5 five, five creature that has Death Touch, which is really, really good. Furthermore, it reads, whenever it enters the battlefield, double the power of each other creature you control until end of turn, those creatures gain Vigilance, um, which is fantastic because it means you can swing in with your Death Touchers as well as keep them back as defenders, and your opponent's going to absolutely hate that because they're going to have to take some trades at some point, or you're just going to win by having evasive creatures, which is... Pretty much how I've won um, the entirety of my games. So, really, really excellent card. Uh, also, furthermore, it's a God Eternal. So, whenever Ronas is removed from the battlefield, either in exile or by um, getting put into the graveyard, then we do get to put him back on top of our library, third from the top. So, pretty awesome effect there. And then Vivian, the other alt win con. Um, here, Fantastic, right? The plus one ability, you're going to be looking for creatures or lands. As I said with Adventurous Impulse, that's what, like 43 cards? 43 cards you can hit with her plus one, so you're, you're probably going to hit one. Um, and even if you do hit a land, you know, a land and nothing else, at least you've stopped yourself from getting a little bit more flooded. Um, furthermore, you can minus three on her and destroy either a target artifact, enchantment, or creature with flying, which is a huge, um, huge range of things to just, just destroy, right? And then furthermore, the emblem <clears throat> reads, creatures you control get plus two, plus two, have vigilance, trample, and indestructible, which is, uh, yeah, pretty much just a game winner, right? Give, give plus two, plus two to all your death touch creatures, which also may have already been buffed up with Vraska. Um, give them vigilance, trample, and indestructible. Your opponent's probably going to scoop. I don't think I've, I've yet to get the Vivian emblem down and then finish the game out, so... That's going to do it for the Deck Tech or the Deck Breakdown, and now we're going to hop right into our games. Alrighty, here we are in a Game 3 up against Extraordinary, or Extraordinary, but they have it spaced out, so I'm guessing it's Extraordinary. As in, there's, there's especially nothing special about them. Which sounds really depressing, right? <clears throat> Ooh, so turn one, Healer Sock. Coming out the gate flying. I like it. Obviously, this is going to make things difficult for us, um, but that's okay. Danto Vanguard, sure, sure. Here's the question. Do we, do we go ahead and play a forest and get down the Prowler, which probably dies to the Vanguard and also makes themselves indestructible, so not really a great trade. Or do we just Assassin's Trophy? Oh, I really don't like that either. Alright, well, let's go Prowler. Let's go Leyline Prowler. You know, I just noticed pretty much all of the the cards for... Oh, well, that one does. I was going to say pretty much all the cards for the new set have, have flavor text, you know, right here. It feeds on the dark energies that course through the deep world. Um, but some of the older cards, I don't know if it's just because there's too much text on the cards and they never got the filler effect or what, but... Uh, Okay, we block here, they take the 
for next turn. Uh, no blocks. We'll take six, but we can at least heal up. I want to I wanna get down another creature that can defend for us, if at all possible. So Meek. Ooh. They're really going heavy into those flyers, huh? Okay, so we can actually get down a poison tip archer this turn. Which I kind of like that. kind of like that a lot. Um, we can assassin's trophy the Tomeek out of the air. That is true. That is true. Yeah, let's go ahead and go with the poison tip. We'll throw down the guild gate uh, next turn. And maybe finality after that, because finality would remove all their creatures. Also would make our Leyline Prowler huge, right? So yeah, go ahead and attack in. So they have no choice to either take the damage or yeah, sacrifice a creature, and they obviously don't want to do that. Now, if I could find some way to give my creatures vigilance constantly, that would be fan fucking fantastic. Okay, so this turn is just gonna hurt. What is that? Six plus five is eleven, bring us down to four. Um I think we do block here, even though we can't kill the creature. Why would they pay for life? They just made it indestructible. Maybe it was a flex move? I'm, I'm not sure. Alrighty. Um, so yeah, let's play another poison tip. And then next turn, let's hope they don't have another way to buff their creatures, because man, they're getting, getting kind of big. And, uh, almost out of finality range, right? Tomika is, at least. Swing it all in again. Alrighty. Um... I think we just want to go block in there, right? Well... Yeah, I think we definitely want to get rid of Tomika, actually. We're gonna take eight. Ooh, if they have some buff, though, we're dead, right? That's, that's not very nice. Alright, well, well, we'll play the, the game of chance here. We'll go down to one. It is my name after all, so why not? Getting down another card. Fantastic. Throw all your creatures down. Makes this all the easier for me. So we didn't draw into another land, which is part of the reason why I wanted to keep Leyline or Leyline alive. So that way we could still finality if need be. They throw down a nice, and we take the action. So our Prowler's gonna live, all their creatures die, and come next turn we'll have a 4-5 that can, you know, start gaining us back some health, which is fan fucking fantastic. Yeah, Danto is not gonna be big enough to deal with it. So, yeah. Ooh, and we just got a Varaska. <laughs> um, so Danto can deal the damage needed to kill Varaska. So I think we're just going to go ahead and throw down a poison tip, and next turn we'll throw down the Vraska. One attack, and we'll, we'll use the Adventurous Impulse. Fantastic, we're back up to five. Let's see what we can hit off of this. Maybe a land, maybe... okay, a land. That's not, not terrible. I think we pretty much have to block here, right? Because if they if they ever get a buff, we're we're dead. Well, not ever, but you know, if they get one right now, we're dead. Oh, they're gonna pay for fantastic for us, right? Just makes them that closer to death. All right, so now let's go Veraska. Good game, good game to you. Oh, extraordinary! Just gonna bow out. Okay, so. Y'all have seen then from from the games there. That was uh yeah that was fantastic. So we're gonna be picking up a victory there, and uh, yeah, awesome. Alrighty, here we are in a game one up against Norin the Wary, and this is uh, a risky hand to keep, but we will indeed keep it, and we'll go ahead and throw down the Guild Gate first. Say risky because it's not it's not really packing anything, though we have plenty of land. Um 
I'm not gonna throw Kai's ghost form on my hard poisoner, for those of you that are wondering. No, it's not happening. Esper. You know what I haven't been seeing enough of here recently? <laughs> that was a joke for those of you that don't understand my humor quite yet, if you're new to the channel. It was Esper. Esper was the joke. <clears throat> That's okay. Maybe they'll be playing something interesting in Esper, like Esper Zombies. I could really get behind that, you know? That would be an awesome deck. So, go ahead, kill my hired poisoner. No? You're just going to keep taking it in the face? Sure, sure. I'm fine with that. Um, so, let's go and get down to Vivian Reed. Uh, maybe not, actually. Maybe we wait until we have enough mana for Akai's Ghost Form. Let's go and throw it on Vivian Champion of the Wilds, and this will also, like... Okay, I was gonna say make sure that they don't have any I don't know, counter spells like Esper usually does. Or uh you know, Vraska's contempts, because those are those are pretty common. So far so good. So I guess our biggest concern oh. Okay. Deployed the units but didn't defend with them. That's uh a bit odd. Going for the Vivian, sure, sure. That actually is a big downfall um, for us because it means we can't give our creatures reach and deal with these Thopters. So if we play our other Vivian, um, it's going to be an uphill battle trying to make sure she survives, right? Oh, they're going for a mill deck, Esper Mill. Okay. Oh, they're milling themselves. Interesting, interesting. So we can go ahead and play Vivian here, and plus one, she goes down to four on their turn. Deal two to the Jace, or we can just Vraska's Contempt to Jace, right? Um, but I kind of like the idea of getting down to free Vivian. They're tapped out. Let's get down to Vivian, and honestly, let's get down to Kai's Ghost Form on the Vivian as well. Um, this way, if they if they have any destroy effects or exile effects, it won't really work. Leyline Prowler, yes, please. <clears throat> Alright, Jace. Fill my fury. Was not supposed to happen. That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> <Always better. clears throat> Alright, so we're gonna need to take out Jace. Here's the here's the kind of funny thing about Jace, right? So say they go to draw their last card. Um, can't we just exile Jace and then they do they just end up losing the game? So I, I don't know. Just seems a Balance. bit um, <laughs> I think I'll take a land card, please. That was five lands in a row, by the way, because we just drew into a land, and then we had Woodland Cemetery and, you know, three other lands. So that was five lands in a row, and people want to say the arena drawer isn't busted. I don't know. <laughs> seems, uh, seems pretty busted to me. Block there, block there, that's fine by me. And we'll end our turn on that note. Good game. Norin, don't do it! Don't leave! Oh, Demon Lord. Uh, what? Are they just about to kill themselves? Oh, they only have cards that are above that mana cost. That's so interesting. All right, so we we are gonna lose here. But that is so interesting. They're about to draw their whole deck. Fantastic, I love it. All right, so yeah, we're we're losing this one, but I'm definitely leaving this in the video because this is uh, <laughs> this is fantastic. Yeah, we'll we'll throw down the good game to them as well. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Alrighty, so, game two, picking up a loss, but, like, honestly, that was awesome. And and y'all saw a lot of the potential in the deck and play with it and yada yada. So, yeah, gonna leave that one in, because that was just fantastic. That was an awesome match, all in all. Um, so, yeah, we'll go and hop on into a game three. Is it? Ona. Is it? Ona. 
Alrighty, moving on into a, uh, a game three here. <clears throat> this is a, a risky hand to keep, but hey, when do I not keep a risky hand, right? <laughs> or maybe I just dramatize everything. Maybe I, I always make y'all think that I have risky hands, when in reality, some of these hands are pretty good, and I just don't want to say anything. This isn't one of those cases, for sure, but uh, <laughs> you never know. Also, my computer seems to be lagging a little bit on the game. Maybe I should have restarted uh, Arena before going to record. That'll be okay, I suppose. Um, fantastic thing about Assassin's Trophy is it doesn't actually deal damage, so Raptor Hatchling won't get its enrage effect. But we have Vivian. I guess we could uh, play her in minus two, try and get out a creature. Yeah. It's either that or we use Assassin's Trophy, and uh, let's be real. Not too keen on that. Okay, so none of these are creature cards. So let's go ahead and exile a land, as we'll probably be seeing more of those than anything else, right? And we'll we'll wait for this Ona to make their move. Tick tock, tick tock. Come on. Another Raptor Hatchling? Sure. And then both at my Vivian is what I'm assuming. Yeah. Which, again, it's okay because we do have Aether Fallen, so given we can eventually hit a creature, which is a bit odd that we haven't thus far. Wow, still. No, no creatures, huh? It's a bit awkward. Certainly a bit awkward, considering we're playing a Death Touch creature deck. Um, do I really want to play down another Vivian just to try to find a creature? I think so. Let's see if you're worried. They are, uh... Let me show oh, you gotta be kidding me. Lost. How many cards have we gone through and literally not seen a single creature? Because we, we minus two on the other Vivian and look down three. We minus two on this Vivian and look down three. We minus... Or we used Adventurous Impulse and look down three. So, like, where the fuck are our creatures? Right? I need something to put in front of Vraska as a meat shield. So come on. Give me a creature. Watch, it's gonna give me hard poisoner, right? Not even something as nice as wow, well, okay. They're just gonna shock us in the face, I guess Not that works. <laughs> I don't know. I'm at a loss. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Okay. So they're probably going to kill our Vraska here, and we literally just paid four mana for a 1 1 Death Toucher. But it's either that or we just take a beating in the face, which I guess would have been fun, right? Could have always Assassin's Trophy, one of their Raptor Hashlings, as they're pretty much up to the mana that Gruul wants to be at, right? Six mana. There's a Charging Tuscadon, which thankfully doesn't have haste, despite its name. Swinging in with everything at Vraska. Um, yeah, here's the thing. Even if I kill one of them, our Vraska becomes useless. So... We're just not. We're just not gonna block. Oh, I grow bored with this fight. Yeah, me too. I grow bored with this fight too. I want a creature. We draw into a Vraska's Contempt. How many? Does somebody want to actually count up how many cards that is that we've been through with literally zero creatures? That is just insanity in my book. Absolute madness. <clears throat> well, we have the Vraska's Contempt, so we might as well save it for their turn and Vraska. Raska the Charging Tuscadon right away, right? Or rather, not right away, but right when it goes to attack. So, we'll just keep uh, keep awaiting. Colossal Majesty, okay. Now, swing in, if you dare. Mwahaha. <laughs> Raptor Hatchlings, yes, yes. That's it? 
Wow, you're making me want to Assassin's Trophy your Raptor Hatchling so hard. Actually, I might just Assassin's Trophy the Colossal Majesty, because that's going to be some huge card draw. Or I could just Vraska's Contempt the Charging Tuscadon, and then they don't have anything to proc the Colossal Majesty. Uh, we got to do something, right? Let's get rid of their Tuscadon, even though I know that's not going to be their worst Dano. By any means. Os okay, there's a creature. Uh, OSK. OSK. It is a creature. Whatever. Y'all know what I was trying to say. Finally, we do get a, a body for the board. Fantastic. And I guess we go no attacks, because I feel like if we swing in here, they're just going to defend with their land war, and I'd rather have the option of killing what I want to kill than them deciding, hey, yeah, my elf is useless. Okay, Needletooth Raptor. That's, uh, that's worthy of an Assassin's Trophy. Or if I can get up two more mana, I can just use Finality, right? That'd be awesome. Our Poison Tip Archer will live, however everything else will die, and the Raptor Hatchlings won't be enraged. <clears throat> we can't just keep hemorrhaging health, but I think we can take it for one more turn. Yeah, well, here's all the creatures. <laughs> Here are all the creatures I was talking about. Alright, well, let's go with Orzhov Enforcer. And still don't think we want to aid the fallen. Sure, we can get back a Vraska Swarm Eminence or a Vivian, but there's no creatures yet there, and we don't want to use Fond as we're going to be using Finality. Again, we can Assassin's Trophy on the Needle Tooth if absolutely need be, which maybe that's what we do on this turn, right? Maybe we just trophy the Needle Tooth. We'll see. We will see. Because if we actually defend against the Needle Tooth, then they will uh, they'll get two for one, basically. Well, unless I defend with the Poison Tip Archer. Charging Tuscadon, another one. Okay, well we can we can still Assassin's Trophy that as well. Okay, so do I block out the Needle Tooth then with the Poison Tip? I think the answer is yes. think that's our move. Kill the Needle Tooth, and then the Needle Tooth will more than likely deal 5 damage right back to the Poison Tip. Resolve. Alrighty. My turn. I guess we're not using Assassin's Trophy on their turn. You know, I just want two lands. <laughs> I know it seems like I'm asking a lot from you, game, but I swear I'm not. I just want some normal draws, you know, be above four land this late into the game not have to look through 20 cards to find my first creature just some basic requests it's not like I'm playing only five creatures so you know although I should probably also chill people always tell me whenever I'm uh... you know at this point I, I kinda wanna kill you guys like I, I don't even care anymore I just wanna just want to take you out. Let's get the dinos on the board. I've been saving up for finality for so long, and clearly it's not. Oh, there, there's the land. See, this this should show y'all. Don't, don't ever break your patience. Uh, we can't aid the fall on this turn and get back a poison tip plus a Vraska swarm eminence, eminence, which I think is 100% worth it. We still have the mana for assassins trophies, so yeah, poison tip and make sure we don't click on the Vivian. That would be embarrassing. Sure, we can't play them quite yet, but uh, it's still nice to restock our hands with some very useful cards. Okay, so they do get the card draw off of Colossal. Mm, we still need one more land for finality. So that's a bit awkward. That is a bit awkward. Frenzied Raptor is uh, certainly a big body. And here's the thing, do we want to not block with our Poison Tip? I don't know if they're going to be attacking with Charging Tuscadon, but like, if we block with Poison Tip, then we don't really have a creature to select for the finality counters, which I guess aren't super important, especially since Charging Tuscadon otherwise would be dealing 8 damage to our face. They're not going to attack at all? Oh, <laughs> you better hope I don't draw into a land. Oh no! For them, of course, not for me. Oh no, for them. <laughs> Big action. Throw them on there. Wipe the board. 
Fantastic. So we're going to deal a whole lot of damage with Poison Tip. Then we're going to get back our Afterlife. And we're not going to attack with Poison Tip because he's, he's all the way down to zero damage. But, uh, yeah, now we throw down our Varaska, our Poison Tip gets bigger and bigger, and that's uh, that's our closer. They're probably going to concede. I, <laughs> I, I don't see them sticking around considering they know I have another Poison Tip and a Varaska in hand. And they're playing a Gruel deck, so it's not like they can really compete. Alrighty then. Alright, so we're gonna swing in with the poison dip, and no matter what they do here, it's a it's a lose lose. Say they make the dragon, then we assassin's trophy the dragon. Say they just block, then uh, well we've taken out their creature. Okay, and I did kick the one one back as a defender. And sure, let's get another let's get another creature down, right? We still have assassin's trophy. Say they play a. Uh, Charging monster stores, which is uh, definitely a possibility. Alrighty, I think we have this game in the bag. We have six damage there, still not quite enough. So let's go and get down another poison dip. And minus our Varaska out once more, and then we go next, and we swing in with everything this time. The 1 1 probably dies to the land of war, but we're still going to deal five damage, and next turn we still have lethal, so. Fantastic there. It does have flying. I know the animation isn't on it, but it does have flying indeed. It just seems like there's been a bit of a bug with the flying animations for tokens. Because uh, dragon tokens also do the same. Alright, well, that's game. <laughs> right, two poison tip archers, double the effect for all of the deaths. So yeah, that was uh that was awesome. So all in all today we had uh we had an awesome first victory. Uh, we had a pretty cool loss in the second game, which is actually why I decided to keep that. And then here in the third one, we we wrapped it up with another victory. So, yeah, honestly, this deck, like I said, it's been doing a hell of a lot better than what I thought it would if you would have walked up to me you know, a week ago and say, Hey, Chance, I got a Death Touch deck I want you to try out. It's pretty sick. I would have been like, well, it might be fun. I don't know about sick. But uh, yeah, this deck performs excellent. So that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all either later tonight or tomorrow. Peace.